Okay, let's have a look a brief history because we have a lot of different versions of 802.11 protocols and also we have some names like Wi-Fi and those kinds of things. So what is Wi-Fi, for example? Where it comes from? Okay, is it like AAA 2.11 things? Let's have a look at those kinds of stuff. Origin of VLANs actually traced back late 1980s. So it is 1980s concept. Before 1980s, we didn't even have these guys, okay? And triggered by FCC. FCC is the organization in US which controls all the spectrum, okay? Which, which gives the spectrum to the, to the TV stations, to the, to the frequencies to the TV stations, to radio stations. In other words, it controls all the, all the electromagnetic spectrum, by the way, okay? Without getting permission from them, you cannot go and have radio station or, or TV station. And these guys, these guys allowed for use of an unlicensed transmission frequency band. It's called ISM band. This ISM band, when they, when they divided the, uh, the, the, the electromagnetic spectrum, they said that, okay, let's have this amount of spectrum for the people, for industry, for scientific research, and for medical research, okay? So whoever, is one, whoever wants to use these things, okay, they can go and use these ISM bands. There was not much control over it. It is this amount of ISM. If you, if you, if you want to do scientific research, you can go ahead and use that one. And but for the and, and the, the other things are full by the way. You get the TV station stuff, radio station stuff, CB personal wireless device station stuff are full. Okay, so that's why they came with the idea of using ISM band. So in other words, these wireless networks are using ISM bands. Okay, ISM bands. In 1997, IEEE 802.11 ratified. So it became a protocol in 1997. Okay? And defined media access control and two physical access methods using radio frequency transmission. Okay? One is frequency hopping and the other one is direct Secrets, okay? The other one is direct secrets. So as I said, in frequency hopping, in frequency hopping, what we are doing is, what we are doing in the frequency hopping is, is that we are having, uh, we are having uh, jumping frequencies in, in, in a given time, okay? In a given time. So that is, that is the idea of frequency. For the direct sequence, uh, again, what we are doing is, we have the, we have the, a code, a special code, and that code is XORed with the data that you're going to transmit. Okay, you're going to transmit. What that code makes is this. When you XORed the code with the data, and when you look at the, 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 the characteristics of the data that you have right now, it, it's going to look like a noise. Okay, let me, let me rephrase all these things from the beginning. When we say spread spectrum, when we say spread spectrum, the meaning of the spread spectrum is spread the spectrum of the signal. So if the spectrum of the bandwidth of the signal, for example, let's say that two kilohertz or two megahertz, but with the spread spectrum it's gonna be huge. Okay? We're gonna increase the spectrum of the signal. Why we are doing this? because we are trying to include as much frequency component as possible into the signal. Again, why we are doing this? If you look at noise, okay, how many frequency components is inside the noise? You guys tell me, if you are familiar with the noise. I'm talking about white noise, this sound that you are getting on the radio, for example we have every possible frequency component inside the noise. Every frequency component inside the noise. And if you look at the autocorrelated function, or, or uh, that's the function of the noise, you're gonna see one spike, okay? One simple spike, we call it impulse, okay? Impulse. If autocorrelation function or the power density function of a signal becomes one impulse, from outside, it looks like a noise. 
from outside, it looks like a noise. So when you increase the spectrum of the signal, you are making the power dance to function or autocorrelation function of that signal like inputs. In other words, you are making that signal looks like a noise. So if someone listens to your communication, they are not going to be able to detect any intelligent information. So I'm making my signal like a noise by increasing the spectrum of the signal. And that increase can be done by this frequency hopping and can be done with this direct sequence. And the code that I was just mentioning, those kind of codes are special because their autocorrelation function or the, the, the power density function of those codes are impulse actually. So when you add that stuff to your data, your data becomes like a noise. That is the whole idea behind this spread spectrum communication systems. As you see, the, the major dilemma for this frequency hopping and direct sequence is this. For the frequency hopping, the receiver must have the same frequency hopping sequence. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to get the message. So synchronization is a big deal. Receiver and sender must be synchronized. Okay. Over here, both entities must have the same code, which is going to spread the spectrum of the signal. Okay. And right now we have that technology. Actually, 10 years ago we had that technology. That's why it is widely used in military. Widely used in military. Okay. And again, as I said, for example, U.S. Air Force is totally based on this frequency hopping communication systems. All right, you guys. So they put a little bit security, okay, a little bit security right here, okay, for for the for the uh, wireless. Uh, communication, let's put it that way. All right, this is the direct sequence and frequency hopping. So let's have a look at this one. And we have the first one, IEEE 802.11a in 1999. Okay, 1999. IEEE 802.11a protocol. Okay, aimed for use within the online national infrastructure UNNI. 5 gigahertz band, as I said, okay, and use coded multi-carrier scheme called orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, OFDM. I'm not going to go into the details of this OFDM, and if you are, if you are interested in this one, this could be a quite a good entry to your e-portfolios, for example. Okay, go and check it yourself. Okay, it is it is in details described in wireless network class anyway. Okay. And OFDM is used in IEEE 802.11a protocol, okay? And for the B protocol, for the B protocol, again, it operates in ISM band, but this time 2.4 gigahertz, okay? Uses direct sequence spectrum, DSSS, okay? And G, okay, G in 2003, okay, G. 802.11b extended is the other name, okay, for the G and aim to improve the data transmission rates for 802.11. Again, works with 2.4 gigahertz ISM bands. Okay, ISM bands. And then, when we came to this B, when the B first accepted, wireless internet compatibility alliance consortium formed. Okay, it's called, this is called VECA, but then to assist in profitability of the products, this VECA renamed as Wi-Fi. Okay. This is an association, Wireless Fidelity Alliance. They create the test suite to certify interoperability initially for 802.11b. Later, extended to 802.11g. Okay, their main concern is the range of VLAN markets, including enterprise homes and hospitals. I mean, everyone is generating, creating something, producing something, but this Wi-Fi, is going to approve those things as far as standards are concerned. So that's why it is very important that when they say that this is Wi-Fi approved, that means that it is a standard stuff. Okay, it is a standard stuff. All right. So this is the summary of this 802.11 VLAN standards. If you look at 802.11, 11, just 11, 2.4 gigahertz, the rate, the data rate is 2 megabit per second. It, yeah, it does use frequency hopping and direct sequence. 
compatible to with none. This is not compatible with anything. Limited bit rate, okay, and higher ranges. When we come to A, 5 gigahertz spectrum, okay, 54 megabit per second speeds that you can get, okay. OFDM is used, okay. Small range for the 802.11 standards, but higher bit rate, the higher bit. And B, 11 megabit per second, DSSS, and G, 2.4 gigahertz, 54 megabit per second, OFDMI, okay. And 11 B and A is, is compatible with these guys. And finally we have N, 150 megabit per second speed, 5 gigahertz spectrum, and it does use OFDM. It does use OFDM. That is the newest thing. Again, this could be a very good entrance to your e-portfolio to give more details about 802.11 and protocol. Okay. And protocol is going to be your job a little bit to, 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 to get the details. As I said, our objective is the security. So where is the security part anyway? Let's have a look at that one. Because we have some other things as well. We have 11C, 11D, okay. and covers additional concern bridging support. Okay. Includes updates for physical layer requirements. And we have E, this is a MAC enhancement. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, L, M, N. Am I right? After I, I know only N anyway. Okay, but I don't know you guys. Maybe there are some other guys available over there. Go and find it on the internet and use it, okay, in your e portfolio. All right. But what is going to be important for me is this. Okay. Let's have a look. This E is, okay, Mac enhancement. They're improving the quality of services, so on and so forth. And it can work with the linked wired internet with the protocol called IEEE 802.11p. Okay, 11p, all right? And F, Internet Access Point Protocol, okay? Roaming problems solved over here, mm -hmm. roaming problems. And some standard stuff, sharing the resources, those kind of things, basically. And H, they have better spectrum management, okay, than A, all right? Considers European requirements for power control and dynamic selection of transmit frequency because Europe has something, we are over here something, so that that kind of stuff basically. And allows IEEE 11A products to be deployed in Europe, okay. And finally, thank God, we have this, IEEE 802.11i. This i is going to be our main concern because this i is the enhanced security mechanism. So that is a security protocol. Okay, that is a security protocol that is used in IEEE 802.11 protocols. With A, we're going to have something called WEP, WEP. But with I, we have the latest security solution in 802.11 wireless networks. So that's why we're going to focus on this one. This is a lot of them. Each one of them have something. Okay, but what is important for us is this one, I. Okay, we didn't have any other major security updates. Okay, as far as protocols are 802.11 protocols concerned, I is the latest solution so far. So when you say N, hey, N is using I. It's compatible with I, but it has some other things as well. Okay, like the data rate, like the bandwidth that they are using, like the transmission protocol that they are using, like OFDM, those, those kinds of stuff. But it does not solve security problems. Security problem is solved. The latest solution is 802.11i protocol. Okay, guys? So don't forget that one. From now on, we're going to focus on I. So, as I said, save discussion for later. So we will... We will Look at that one. But the first current VLAN security protocol was called, it, it is still called, not was, still called WEP. 
And we're gonna see this WEP, okay? And we will look at the advantages and disadvantages. And we will look at the problems from security point of view. And then we will understand why we need it to come over here. But when we come over here, we are not going to find one single solution, unfortunately. We're going to see two solutions. One for short term, which is compatible with WEP. And the other one is long term, which requires totally new hardware. Totally new hardware. Totally new wireless model, in other words. Okay?